Fractions. Writing fractions in lowest terms. With me, Catherine. What does it mean to write fractions in lowest terms? When the numerator at the top and the denominator at the bottom of the fraction cannot both be divided by the same number, this means the fraction is in lowest terms. A fraction is in lowest terms when the numerator and denominator have no common factor other than one. Let me give you an example. Here's three-fifths. The factors for three are three times one, and the factors for five are five times one. Do you notice that the only common factor here is one? Since the only common factor is one, this fraction is in lowest terms. That means it can't be reduced any farther. I realize there's lots of methods out there to do this. Many books ask students to find the largest multiple of two numbers. As I'll show you, that's not necessary. This method, I think, is the easiest for students that do not have their multiplication tables memorized. But please use the method that makes you happy and gives the correct answer. Let's look at some examples here. To reduce fractions, we find the largest factor in the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom. Now these aren't so bad. Let's look at three-ninths. The only factors of three are three times one. Then I look at nine. Does three go into nine? It sure does. I'm gonna cancel the common factors, which leaves me with one over three. That means that three-ninths equals one-third. Let's look at the next one. When I think of 16, I think of eight times two. Does eight go into 24? It sure does. Eight times three. I'm gonna cancel the common factors, which leaves me with two over three. It turns out that 16 over 24 reduces to two thirds. Let's look at the last one, 30 over 55. When I think of 30, I think of five times six. Does five go into 55? It sure does, five times 11. Does six go into 55? No, nope, that's why I didn't use it. I'm gonna cancel my common factors and I end up with six over 11. That means that 30 over 55 reduces to six elevenths. Cool. This is all great and everything, but what if I can't think of the largest factor? Let me show you how to do that. What if I can't remember the largest number? No problem. Just start to divide until you can't divide without a remainder. That's it. Let's look at 36 over 45. When I think of 36, I know that's six times six. Does six go into 45? It sure does, six times nine. I didn't find the largest number, I just thought of one I knew. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna cancel the common factor, and we end up with six over nine. When I look at six and nine, I have to think about this for a second. I know that six is three times two. Does three go into nine? It sure does, three times three. Once again, I'm gonna cancel my common factors, so I end up with two over three. Now when I look at this, the only factors for two are two times one. And the only factors for three are three times one. Since one is the only common factor, guess what? We did it. 36 over 45 reduces to two thirds. Yeah. Let's look at 60 over 75. When I think about 60, I always think about a five, five times 12. Does five go into 75? It sure does, five times 15. See. You don't have to find the largest number. You just need to start. I'm gonna cancel out my common factors and I end up with 12 over 15. I know that I can reduce more because I remember that three times four is 12 and three also goes into 15. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna cancel out my common factors and I end up with four over five. Factors for four are two times two or four times one. Well, two doesn't go into five, so guess what? It's reduced. 
60 over 75 reduces to 4 fifths. And I mean, how much more easy can it get? Now here's some for you to try. You're going to reduce the fractions to lowest terms. You're going to pause the lesson, simplify, then press play to check. Remember, you don't need to find the largest common factor. You just need to find a common factor and keep reducing. All right, let's see how you did. When I think of 64, I think of 8 times 8. It just so happened that 8 times 9 is 72. When I cancel out my common factor, I end up with 8 over 9. 8 over 9 doesn't reduce anymore. So 64 over 72 equals 8 over 9. Some of you may have started to divide by 2. That's perfect. You just keep dividing till you end up with 8 ninths. Let's look at 30 over 100. For this one, any time my number ends in a 0, I know that 10 goes into it. 10 times 3 is 30, and 10 times 10 is 100. I'm going to cancel out my common factors, and I end up with 3 over 10. Once again, 3 over 10 does not have a common factor, so 30 over 100 reduces to 3 over 10. Let's look at the last one. When I think of 49, I think of 7 times 7. Does 7 go into 56? It sure does, 7 times 8. I'm going to cancel my common factor, and I end up with 7 over 8. Once again, 7 over 8 does not have a common factor. So it turns out that 49 over 56 is equal to 7 eighths. Let's reduce these also. You're going to pause the lesson, simplify, then press play to check. Let's see how you did. We have 78 over 90. Now I can't think of anything other than 2 that goes into 78. So I have 2 times 39. It just so happens that 2 times 45 is 90. When I cancel out my common factors, I end up with 39 over 45. And I think, well, it might reduce more. I just happen to know that 3 times 13 is 39. Then I have to figure out, well, does 3 go into 45? It sure does, 3 times 15. I'm going to cancel out my common factor, and I end up with 13 over 15. That means that 78 over 90 reduces to 13 over 15. Let's look at 30 over 54. I happen to know that 6 times 5 is 30, and 6 times 9 is 54. So I could have used 6 as my greatest common factor. Let's pretend we didn't remember that. I know that 2 goes into 30, 2 times 15. Since 54 is an even number, 2 also goes into it, 2 times 27. I'm going to cancel out my common factor, and I end up with 15 over 27. When I think about this, I can reduce it more. I remember that 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 9 is 27. I cancel out my common factors, and I end up with 5 over 9. It turns out that 30 over 55 reduces to 5 ninths. Let's talk about equivalent fractions for a minute. Equivalent means equal. Equivalent fractions are different fractions that have the same measure. 3 ninths equals 1 third. Even though we reduced it, they still have the same measure. Here's 3 ninths and here's 1 third. Do you notice that they take up the same amount of space? Yeah, they have the same measure. Let's look at another example. 6 tenths equals 3 fifths. When I reduce 6 tenths, I have 3 fifths. Let's look at a picture of those. Here's 6 over 10. Remember, the 6 means the shaded parts, and the 10 is the total number of parts we have. Here's 3 fifths. 3 parts are shaded, and there's a total of 5. Do you notice something interesting? Yeah! They have the same measure because the same parts are shaded. We could make little diagrams for all of these, but let me show you how easy it is to determine if these are equivalent fractions. That means they have the same measure. What we're going to do 
is we're going to cross multiply. Cross multiply means we're going to, well, cross multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, and then 9 times 1 is 9. Since 9 equals 9, that means that 3 ninths equals 1 third. And we just saw that looking at our circles. Let's look at 9 over 12 and 3 over 5. We're going to cross multiply again. 9 times 5 is 45, and 12 times 3 is 36. Well, 45 does not equal 36. And you notice this symbol there? It's an equal sign with a line through it. That means not. These are not equal. That also means that 9 twelfths is not equal to 3 fifths. They don't take up the same measure or the same amount of space. Here's a couple for you to try. Pause the lesson, solve, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. Remember, we're going to cross multiply. That means we're going to take 21 times 5, which is 105. Then we're going to take 35 times 3, which is also 105. What does that mean? Well, since 105 equals 105, 21 over 35 also equals 3 fifths. That means they take the same amount of space. Let's look at the second one. Once again, we're going to cross multiply. 4 times 100 is 400, and then 20 times 20 is also 400. Wow! Since 400 equals 400, that means that 4 over 20 is equivalent or equals 20 over 100. Here's the self quiz. You're going to pause the quiz, solve, then press play to check. 32 over 56 reduces to... 4 sevenths, C. Let's look at number 2. 84 over 92 reduces to B, 21 over 23. And finally, we need to figure out if these are equivalent fractions or not. And it turns out they are not. If you got these correct, you can move along. For the rest of us, let's see how I did it. Let's look at number 1 again. I know that 8 times 4 is 32, and 8 times 7 is 56. Remember, you could have started dividing by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and so on, but you should still get the same answer, 4 over 7. That means that 32 over 56 is equivalent or equals 4 sevenths. Let's look at number 2. I happen to know that 2 times 42 is 84, and 2 times 46 is 92. I picked 2 because they're both even numbers, 84 and 92. So I ended up with 42 over 46. But I realized that these are both even numbers also, so I need to reduce some more. 2 times 21 is 42, and 2 times 23 is 46. When I cancel out my common factors, I end up with 21 over 23. Cool! Some of you may have reduced by 4 right away. It doesn't matter. We'll still get 84 over 92, equals or is equivalent to 21 over 23. Let's look at our last one. Hopefully you remembered that we're going to cross multiply. 7 times 21 is 147. 13 times 15 is 195. 147 is not equal to 195. That means that 7 thirteenths is not equal to 15 over 21. They don't have the same measure, or, if we were shading a circle, they wouldn't be shading the same amount of space. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I sure did. Did you know that there's video guides and worksheets available for all of the Pie Crustable Lecture Series? Yeah! Make sure to subscribe, because you don't want to miss the new videos. I love this stuff! Have a request? Let me know at piecrustable at gmail.com or hit this YouTube comment box below. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope you join me in my next lecture.